I was suddenly caught up into the spirit realm. When that happens, at least to me, everything just gets heightened. My senses become heightened, my vision, it's just a, a, a different level. The spirit realm is very real. It is as real as anything in the natural realm. Actually, it's more real. But but it everything just gets heightened. All of a sudden, you've got some like supersonic smell going on with your nose. And Holy Spirit said, as clear as I've, as clear as if you came up to me and you said it to me, Holy Spirit said, it's time for the showdown. Okay, well, it's time for the showdown. Hello, Bezel T3. That was Apostle Tim Sheets, brother of so-called Apostle Dutch Sheets, giving new revelation directly from God while preaching on September 5th, 2021. Now, while I agree that the spiritual realm is as real as the physical realm, I do not agree that Tim or his brother Dutch are modern day apostles who see angels on the regular and who, unlike you and me, receive fresh downloads from God. So how does Tim prove he is an apostle? Well, it's because it's on his website, and it's also on his Oasis Church website. Another reason is that only a bona fide modern-day apostle could write a book called Ninjas with Feathers, The Super Special Mission of Angels. Now, you can find that book in the store section of Tim's website. It happens to be on sale, perhaps not one of his best sellers. And while you're there, you can also purchase Tim's WWJD, you know, What Would Jesus Do style rubber band, uh, rubber band, they said, rubber wristband with the phrase of no great shakes that says, hell doesn't stand a chance. Now, Tim, like his brother Dutch, are steeped in what's known as the New Apostolic Reformation. The New Apostolic Reformation movement, it, it's a term first used by perhaps the founder of the whole thing, C. Peter Wagner. And among the glaring errors of this movement are the restoration of modern-day apostles and the twin-engine errors of dominionism, which in time is supposed to bring forth a Christian theocracy before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, here is Tim Sheets on September 5th, 2021, as he talks to the faithful at Oasis Church in Middletown, Ohio. He begins innocently enough by reading a scripture from the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 today. New King James Version, it'll be on the screen for you. Now, this passage is pointing to a new creation kingdom that cannot be shaken, that comes after the consummation of all things. But Tim will use this passage and the word shaking as a mere setup for the real meat of the matter, and that is Tim's new and improved revelation. He gets straight down a three-inch pipe from God. I will tell you about a vision Holy Spirit gave me about three weeks ago and a word of the Lord in just a moment. And there you have it. Tim, as a NAR apostle, believes that he can speak with more authority and with much more regularity than the Roman Catholic Pope when he supposedly speaks ex cathedra or from the chair of St. Peter. And this is neither good nor helpful in any sense. As Pastor Jason of Valley Presbyterian Church said as he was teaching just last week. But be wary of extra biblical revelation. Like, stick to the script. Stick to the revealed will of God. Don't go beyond what's written. And that's exactly what's happening here as Tim misuses both Hebrews chapter 12 and then will misuse Ezekiel 37 in order to lend just a tiny, tiny bit of credence to blathering about his supposed vision directly from God. And, oh, by the way, a quick plug for his goofy rubber bracelets. A confident, a confident army is rising to its feet. As my bracelets read, hell doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> Sporting all three colors of the bracelet available on his website, by the way. Tim then says, without a tinge of humility. Now I want to begin to describe to you 
a vision that Holy Spirit gave to me on August the 11th. Tim seems utterly unconcerned about Hebrews 12 or if you were to listen to this whole thing, Ezekiel 37, and what they mean in context. What Tim really wants to talk about is his new revelation from God, a gross error of the new apostolic reformation movement as a modern day apostle, no less authoritative than the apostle John or Matthew or Paul, another gross error error of the NAR. I was at home recuperating from hip replacement uh, surgery. Okay, now that's odd because Tim quite often cozies up with other NAR folks who specialize in signs and wonders and miraculous healings such as Bill Johnson. <laughs> and here they are both at the RISE Summit uh, back in March 2021. So why bother with a hip replacement surgery when Apostle Bill could have taken care of Tim's hip problem simply by laying hands on it? Uh, no, I believe there's something going on in the the left hip, either uh, you're scheduled for a hip replacement. Curious, I shouldn't wonder. It's time for the showdown. I immediately, when he said that, I immediately went, went to the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. Oh, is that where you went? Okay, now, now notice that despite getting a word directly from God that should be able to stand on its own, Tim immediately supplements it with the actual word of God. Now, why would that be? Well, because error mixed with truth is always easier to swallow than undiluted error alone. Now, Elijah obviously represents the apostolic and the prophetic in our times. Obviously? <laughs> well, not so fast there, Tim. Uh, I mean, where did you get that from? I know that in Luke, we read of an angel telling Zechariah, the priest, of a child his wife Elizabeth was to bear, who we know as John the Baptist. The angel says to Zechariah, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. But nowhere is Elijah spoken of as representing the apostolic and prophetic in our times. Tim is making that up out of whole cloth. Then in this vision, Holy Spirit began to show me a vast army of angel warriors. They look different than the other divisions of angel armies that I've seen. Because Tim has so much experience with different species of angels. I mean, perhaps they look like the ninja feathered angel on the cover of his book, who kind of looks like a cartoon chicken with his uh, wings spread out. Now, here is where Ezekiel 37 gets totally thrashed by Tim. The army of Ezekiel 37, okay, forget for just a second its immediate context, but its, it's foreshadowing context. Context. It points forward to God's redeemed people, regenerated people, born again people, both from Jew and Gentile, who fight against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And when all elect Jews and Gentiles are brought into God's kingdom, you know, that final number is brought in, which, uh, by the way, his kingdom is not of this world, Jesus told us, they will all be gathered together as a great army along with all the saints of old and all the angels at the second coming of Christ Jesus. Now, Tim will shift from receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit to getting uh, a fresh download from Jesus I've himself. I've never seen these angels before. And I heard these words from the Lord. He said, they've been rarely seen on the earth. But now I'm releasing them in great numbers in all the nations. Ah. You've been rarely seen, ah. but I'm releasing them in great numbers in all the nations. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, what do they do? And he said, they are angels that guard my glory and my honor. <laughs> they are coming to defend my honor. Uh -huh. 
and he said they are preparing the way for my ecclesia's move on the earth mm. that expands my kingdom mm -hmm. now in greater right. measure yeah yeah kingdom now spiritual discernment Theology. healings and miracles will increase mm -hmm. upon my joint heirs uh, how about hip These healings angels will assist them to protect my honor and my glory on the earth and bring me the honor of the nations my father has promised me See, he's not talking about the second coming and the new heavens and the new earth. He's talking about right now, okay? Although this has been going on for 20 years, and whereas we're going to see, nothing much has changed. And he talks about rarely seen angels, as if there are angels that are kind of run-of-the-mill, here and there and everywhere. Guys, he's making this stuff up. Here we have just heard that, uh, so the, the, well, it's the same old weather-beaten dominion theology garbage that Tim wants us to believe is straight from God directly to his ears. You're not allowed to ask questions, okay? You're not allowed to question what he's saying because like the Pope of Rome, Tim is a modern-day apostle and you will submit to him or else you will be dealt with. Arise with me to reign, says the Lord, for I am rising in this world as I have never risen mm. before. Mm -hmm. Risen. I will not be. I will not be an indifferent bystander. <laughs> okay. The Lord, get this. He's, he's quoting what he heard from the Lord. And the Lord says to him, I will not be an indifferent bystander. Now that's wild because that is straight out of the message Bible from this Hebrew chapter, Hebrews chapter 12 passage. Listen. Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God, for God is not an indifferent bystander. <laughs> Interesting. Now, could it be that God needs to quote from the Message Bible? Guys, these NAR folks are simply making this stuff up as they go, intentionally going off script, okay, as Pastor Jason said. C. Peter Wagner declared in 2001 that a new era of modern-day apostles had begun. But what actually do they have to show for it? I will not be a bystander, says the Lord. I will rise and I will thunder against iniquitous roots that mock me. Hmm. Rise against iniquitous roots that mock me, says the Lord. So says Tim. Now, my question is this, okay? In over 20 years of modern-day apostles spouting off stuff like this, is the world a different place? Is it, is it a more Christianized world? Is there less crime, more justice, and less corruption in politics? Fewer or no abortions or miscarriages anymore? Less drug and alcohol abuse? Less domestic violence or sex trafficking or street gang murders? The answer, I'm afraid, is a resounding no. And as a prophet of the Lord, as an apostle of the King, I'm going to, I'm going to be as Ezekiel. I'm going to dare prophesy. God come to you and you're going to live. Holy Spirit, I believe you gave me this word and you certainly told me how to end it. As an apostle in your kingdom, a representative wow. on this planet of your kingdom, wow. spoken to by the Holy Spirit. Um, Tim, let's ask you a question here. Just who appointed you and your brother, for that matter, uh, the, the, to the office of apostle? Um, was it the angel with the ninja feathers or, or Bill Johnson? Or maybe it was prophet Bob Jones, who, by the way, was accused of sexual misconduct while at the same time claiming visions of heaven and conversations with Jesus. Now, friends, apostles are past tense. Jude 3, okay, verse 3. Beloved, while I was making...
making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you, appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all time. You know, in the first century, when the canon was being uh, compiled and finished, once for all handed down to the saints. Tim and others like him are spiritual heavyweights only in the spiritually dark, dank, and murky realms of the NAR movement and nowhere else. Breath wind come and breathe upon them. Breath wind come all across this United States. Come to the boneyard, Lord. <laughs> the boneyard. The boneyard. <laughs> Now, again, that's a dopey allusion to Ezekiel 37, but, but it makes me think of that 1991 American-made, absolutely awful, straight-to-video movie stinker called The Boneyard that was so bad. Sorry, Phyllis Diller. It only got worse as the minutes wore on, much like the erroneous, torturous doctrines of the NAR movement. I say, look, come on, let's get in agreement with you. Here's we his break brother. that off. We break that lying spirit off of them and that spirit of fear off of them. And we say, you will no longer listen to demons. I've seen many breakthrough angels in this room mm -hmm. tonight, a part of, the, of a division of angels that are called breakthrough angels. Uh, folks, okay, this guy, Tim, sees angels, I guess, all the time. But the folks in the room that he's talking to, well, they didn't see these angels he's talking about. But Apostle Tim somehow is able to see them because he is special and they are not. You see, the, the angels that are described in Scripture, well, the descriptions are few and far between. But Tim is saying that he can see them because he's an apostle with special powers and you are not. And as he was just prophesying that, they begin to leave. These are angels that go forth to break up, break out, and break through. Now, these are two brothers, the Sheets, who are part of a movement that misreads, misinterprets, and misapplies the Word of God. Sadly, these guys epitomize the fourth uh, verse of Jude, uh, where we read, For certain people have crept in unnoticed, those who were long before marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into indecent behavior and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. But this shouldn't be a surprise. You see, false teachers have, have been and always will be among true Christians and the church of Jesus Christ, whose main thrust, okay, in reality, must always be the proclamation of Jesus Christ as the antidote for sinners headed for a real hell, eternally experiencing the real just judgment and displeasure of the God who created them. The gospel needs to be center for the church, not angels, not these apostles who pop off with stuff that without other scriptures to somehow prop whatever they're saying up makes no sense whatsoever. Now, this message from Tim Sheets, it had zero, absolutely zero gospel in it, and therefore was another gospel. And as you probably know, Paul declared in Galatians chapter 1, but even if we or an angel from heaven, hmm, ironic, should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, you know, the apostle Paul, all about the gospel of Jesus Christ, very little about angels, by the way, he is to be accursed. Now, here is one more New Apostolic Reformation clown for good measure, and I put him at double speed so it's not quite as painful. <clears throat> Let's just pray and the Lord showed me a vision of angels. When he said angels were dispatched, I saw angels go all over this nation and they had a sword in their hand. And they were beginning to, lock, to, to take the sword and knock locks off of, of buildings all over this nation. Uh, buildings that contained people. People begin to pour out of these buildings and they poured out as molten lava began to pour out of these buildings. The Lord said, that's my remnant coming out of places. Molten lava. Gag. 
Oh, man. Paul goes on in Galatians, and he reiterates what he had just said. He says, as we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. And that that word there means may the end time, it's anathema in the, in the Greek, and it's may the end time wrath of God descend upon that person and turn them to ash. Now, why this doesn't happen, why God is so gracious to these folks, false teachers, I'm not sure, but he's, he's a patient God. Our God is a patient God, and perhaps some of these false teachers will turn and repent from their error, turn to Christ in repentance and faith, and be saved. I, I don't know, but, but people, I, I, I need to say this again. Flee from these men who love these high and lofty titles and love to speak of false personal revelations from God to wow the ignorant, sign-seeking, glory-hungry crowd. Do not be counted among them. Instead, listen to these words once again. But be wary of extra-biblical revelation. Like, stick to the script. Stick to the revealed will of God. Don't go beyond what's written. And don't just stick to what's written. You can be the ultimate legalist. You have a lot of liberty mm. to not sin against God and whatever ice cream you want to choose or what pizza. You know, you've got a lot of liberty in the world to play sports, do these things.